and a very good morning to all of you myself neha gupta your mentor for current affairs i hope you were eagerly waiting for me to come on monday so let's begin today's journey which is going to be very fruitful and productive for all of you so you have to be attentive throughout the session because the information which i am going to give you in this session is going to be very useful if you are appearing for any kind of banking examination or any examination which requires current affairs okay so let's begin i hope all of you are ready uh guys before beginning i hope you are aware of the live classes and also about our mobile application okay and uh, one more thing that guys this is the number through which you can connect with us uh, in case you have any kind of query related to the exam if you want to give us feedback related to something like lectures or about our course or anything any problem anything that you want to share with us you can just whatsapp us or call us on this number this is the website this is the mail id okay so these are channels through which you can reach out to us i hope we are good to go so let's begin with the first question <clears throat> in january 2023 varanasi containment railway station varanasi kant railway station has been awarded a five star e trite station certification by the food safety and standards authority of india for providing quality and nutritious food to passengers in light of this statement how many e trite stations are located in india at present so here uh, what does this question is asking you that how many e trite stations are there in india after this inclusion so here we have seven okay so what are the e trite stations from the name itself it is very easy to guess that e trite station is a certification given by the fssai and we have just read that it is providing the nutritious food to its passengers and that is why it has been given this e trite station certification okay although this certification does not harbor any kind of monetary prize or railway is not a private organization that uh, will benefit from this kind of certification but if you see it from a non monetary perspective then definitely it is going to boost the confidence of the public in the government and the railways right <laughs> so what are the other e trite stations in india first anand vihar terminal railway station in delhi chhatrapati shivaji then mumbai central vadodara railway chandigarh railway and bhopal railway now since there are only seven railway stations which are e trite so please remember their names okay <clears throat> now guys i have a little more to discuss with you regarding the e trite so first of all we are going to discuss about this movement itself so this e trite's movement is not very old movement okay it is a uh, very recent and when was it launched this is your question okay <coughs> apart from this don't worry i'm going to tell you each and everything about this question but launch year i have kept it a secret from you so that you also do a little bit of homework right now coming to the e trite movement obviously from the name itself it is very evident that it aims to create awareness among the people so that they choose the right kind of food the place the right place from where they need to eat because we also know that street food is not very healthy and it causes a lot of diseases okay <clears throat> so that's the benefit of this e trite movement the objective of it. and it has the tagline which is very important from exams perspective sahi bhojan behtar jeevan okay now it is also aligned to the national health policy 2017 which aims to focus on preventive and promotive health care and flagship programs like it is also connected with the flagship programs like ayushman bharat poshan abhiyan anemia mukt bharat and swachh bharat mission obviously if we are choosing the right kind of food to eat then obviously the portion the nutrition security of our body will increase we will become disease free like we will also get rid of anemia we will also uh, if we eat the right kind of healthy food then we will fall less sick and thus we will not be in, in the need of ayushman bharat scheme okay so the burden of the government will also get reduced and at the same time the health of the people can also be ensured and swachh bharat mission will also be catered to by this e trite movement because again it is not only creating awareness among the eaters it is also creating awareness and at the same time monitoring the uh, kind of food which the people serve okay 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्ट्रीट फूड वेंडर्स हो गए या फिर रेलवे स्टेशन का न्यूज दैट वी जस्ट है in uh, all in in all in all the eat right movement is also going to contribute towards swachh bharat mission because the waste that is created by eating the street food or by eating the food uh, from the from not a very posh place creates the garbage okay and if the eat right movement is taken on a uh, right path then in not in a direct way but in an indirect way this is contribute towards the swachh bharat mission as well okay now under the eat right movement we have eat right initiatives certain so first is the state food security food safety index which measures the performance of states on five parameters so first is human resources and industrial data sorry institutional data compliance food testing infrastructure and surveillance training and capacity building and com- consumer empowerment so if all these institutions or i would say all these parameters are implemented in every state then not only it will give a push to the eat right movement but it will also cater to the health of the people and thus i would say that this is an initiative which caters to the integrated approach okay so do remember the state food safety index because here we have the five most important parameters which can be directly asked in the examination okay the next important thing <clears throat> is the eat right awards okay although the awardees are not important for you to remember because they have not been announced as of now eat right awards are the awards instituted by fssai to recognize the food companies and individuals to empower citizens to choose safe and healthy food so here we have not been taking the consumers approach we are also looking at the producer side so it is a complete circle okay now do remember that eat right movements nodal agencies fssai so all these initiatives like the state food safety index and the awards and the mela all these initiatives are spearheaded by the fssai only okay so the last initiative is the mela which is organized by the uh, same organization to increase the awareness among the street, uh, citizens okay question number 2 <clears throat> where is the first in vitro fertilization mobile unit for animals inaugurated so here guys amreli gujarat is the right answer so the news if you look at it from uh, an outsider outsider's perspective so the news is this much only okay the minister of fisheries dairy and dairying and animal husbandry has inaugurated the first in vitro fertilization mobile unit for animals in amreli gujarat but what is in vitro fertilization so you can clearly see it here this is the process and this is the mobile unit itself which has been inaugurated in amreli okay so here you can clearly see the samples are being taken and then the embryo formation stage is there and then they are frozen then once the embryo is completed or in its final stage it into the animals and then the birth of the offs- offspring takes place after the completion of the gestation cycle okay so this is how the in vitro fertilization takes place in humans as well and in animals also it is being done to increase the progeny of the animals okay next question which institute houses the national genome editing and training center so here national agri food biotechnology institute at mohali punjab is the right answer okay so first of all what is this national genome editing and training center it is a center which is going to teach about genome editing but what is genome editing exactly so guys you can clearly see here this is a chromosome and these chromosome carry the genetic material like the dna okay i hope that it is visible to all of you what i am whatever i am writing here so this dna contains the genetic material okay the characteristic of the offspring the uh, disabilities and whatever is the trait that the offspring will take from its parent is all transmitted through the dna which is there in the chromosomes now what is happening you, you can clearly see in the picture what is this person doing it is changing the dna material it is changing the genome of the animal so here what we are doing we are uh, changing the genes the genetic material 
and why do we do so because we want to have certain desired characteristics in animals or plants that is why we do this genome editing okay so i hope that this much is clear to all of you now let's move to the news the news is this much only that this center has been established at this agri food biotechnology institute so clearly the genome editing would be done for plants majorly uh it is going to be the first one roof state of the art facility that was the modern facility that will cater to the different genome editing methods including crisp cas mediated genome modification this is a technique for doing the genome editing okay so do remember this now one more associated news as well that this national agri food organization itself organized a conference that is national conference on food and in, uh, nutritional security 2023 international conference okay so it was uh, held at the national agri food biotechnology institute which is one of the organizers of this conference okay so here the names of the organizers are given you can clearly read it on your own and try to memorize i am going to tell you the significance of the food and nutritional security so guys for ensuring the nutritional security or uh, food security what the government of india is doing at present are you aware of it it is the promotion of millets because millets are not only helping us in uh, achieving an ecological balance it is also helping us in achieving an economical benefit for example these are cheaper so the people uh, who are not very privileged can also achieve them uh, can also eat them and the third thing is the nutritional benefit that millets give so they are not going to secure the food security but also the nutritional security of india as well okay and i hope you are aware that we are right now sitting in the international year of millets 2023 is the international year of millets okay so if you haven't started eating millets as of now start doing it because they are very much nutritional uh, for our body okay ragi jowar whatever it is try to uh, include these uh, millets in your diet okay or how much outlay has been sanctioned for the schemes of the ministry of development and development of north eastern region for 2022 23 to fy26 so here uh, the right answer is 12800 crores now to be more precise it is 12882.2 crores and obviously this amount is not easy to remember so skip it don't try to remember just remember the round sum okay the round figure apart from this this amount has been given uh, to various schemes of the uh, ministry of development of north eastern region which are not very relevant from the exam perspective therefore i did not provide it here okay now let's move on to the next question how many districts are covered in the pradhan mantri national apprenticeship mela january 2023 so here 242 districts are uh, covered in this national apprenticeship mela okay so guys just give me a second yeah okay so uh i hope you are aware that national apprenticeship mela is organized under the skill india mission we have two more melas which are organized and which appear to be very similar first is the rozgar mela and another one is the kaushal kaushal me, uh, mela mela now these two melas are not organized under the skill india mission these two are organized under the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana okay so that's a very big distinction please remember uh, these three melas okay now what is this apprenticeship mela this provides an opportunity to the people who have passed from class 5th to class 12th to obtain skill certificates and uh, do apprenticeship in industry okay so that's the benefit of this initiative <clears throat> question number 6 which state has launched the cms sukh sukshre sahayata kosh for providing higher education to the children of needy people so here himachal pradesh guys is the right answer so uh, himachal pradesh cm sukhvinder singh sukku recently appointed person 
so he has launched this sukhashray sahayata kosh so it is going to provide the funding for the education of the poor and needy people okay so that's all i hope you remember that uh, the governor of this state is rajendra arkiller arlekar sorry arlekar rajendra vishwanath arlekar is the governor and cm is sukhminder singh sukku so do remember the uh, names of these two people okay guys before moving ahead with any other question i am going to give you a question tell me the capital of himachal pradesh okay find it out and do a study on the capital of himachal pradesh and then tell me what is the capital okay so i hope you have guessed that there is something to it okay it's not merely a capital so find it out on your own next question is which bank has partnered with open in january 2023 to provide a fully native digital currency current account journey for its customers including the smes freelancers homepreneurs influencers and more so axis bank guys is the right answer so first of all i'm going to tell you certain facts about axis bank barti ka naam zindagi is the tagline of this bank amitab choudhary is the current md and ceo of this bank and mumbai is the headquarters okay whenever uh we have banks and news this is all these facts become a part of your banking awareness and these can be asked so remember these facts now coming to the news the news is nothing it's just that a digital current account facility will be provided to certain sectors for example the smes the freelancers the homepreneurs the influencers who are engaged in some business or the working opportunity the economic opportunity okay this is the bank's first ever partnership with a fintech player which is open okay uh, to launch a fully digital current account and the customers can open their digital account by using the video kyc features or the facility next question is when is the world day of war orphans observed so january 6 is the date and there is no theme of this day in this year but is the estimated real gdp for 2022 to 23 as per the nso's first advanced estimates of national income at both constant and current prices for the financial year 2022 to 23 so here rupees 157.6 lakh crore is the right answer now before going into the details i just want to give you a brief idea of the gdp okay so here gdp i hope all of you have in your static economics as well the economics and social issues which are a part of your phase 2 of rbi sebi and nabard sorry not sebi but nabard ka to hai hi okay so gdp is a very common topic which can be asked from you in any examination so you should be clear with the basics so gdp is one is the real gdp and one is the nominal gdp okay then gdp uh, in real gdp we have two parts uh constant okay sorry i did a mistake here it's not the real gdp which has two parts it's the nominal gdp which has two parts because the real gdp gdp at fc at factor cost and nominal gdp is the gdp at market price so here we take into consideration the market price the changes in market price so in the nominal gdp we have the gdp at constant prices and the gdp at current prices okay so that's the distinction which we follow in the calculation of gdp and what is the real gdp for fy 22 to 23 it is 157.60 lakh crores uh, okay so let's move to the numbers only so firstly we have the current year the amount is this much and the growth percentage is 7% if we take into consideration the previous year's data and remember this is the provisional estimate for the previous year okay the final estimates of the income of fy22 have not been released by nso as of now they are just the provisional estimates highlighted by the nso itself so previously we had the income of 147.36 lakh crores and now it is uh, increased to 157.6 lakh crores estimated to be increased so last year the growth rate was 8.7% now the growth rate is 7% so 
there can be another question from this that what is the growth rate according to nso's first advance estimate for the income then it is 7% remember this thing okay rbi has also sticked to it uh, rbi has also uh, maintained this growth uh, growth rate for india for the current year nominal gdp if we talk about so for the current year it is going to be this okay uh, and uh, for the last year it is 236.65 lakh crore so you can clearly see the difference in the real gdp and nominal gdp and that difference comes because we include the market price of the product in the nominal gdp okay market price also include your in, uh, indirect taxes and subsidies so that's that's the basic difference okay and this is the uh, growth rates for the nominal gdps for these years now if you are thinking whether you have to remember each and every amount here or not so if your examination is coming near then remember each and every amount if your examination is coming 6 months later then also remember each and every amount or if it is going to come in uh, at the end of this year then also each and every amount is important why because this is the advance estimate of income for the year by nso until or unless we have another advance estimate or the final estimate coming up by the nso these amounts would stand as the ultimate and these can, these are important but in case if another estimate comes out then those estimates would have more significance okay then we will forget these estimates okay so question number 10 is who has been appointed as the new ceo of paytm payments bank so here surender chavla that is the right answer i hope you remember that paytm payments bank is a scheduled bank <coughs> now i am asking you <coughs> to tell me how many other banks or what are the other banks which are listed on this schedule payment bank list of schedule 2 of rbi act okay let's move to the next question india's first coal gasification based tulchar fertilizer plant will be ready for commissioning by october 2024 at angol odisha This would be the fifth urea producing indigenous plant of India in July 2022 the government has set a target for eliminating urea imports by dash year so here the right answer is 2025 okay so for this fact is important now before going into the details of this news let me give you a brief idea of the nutrient uh, fertilizers and the fertilizers that india gives in all okay so give me a second so guys india provides subsidies fertilizer subsidy for urea for dap diammonium phosphorus mop muriate of potash and npks now this npks are the nutrients okay so nitrogen phosphorus potassium and sulfur these are the four nutrients on which the subsidies are given by the government of india under the nutrient based subsidy scheme of 2010 okay apart from this uh, the these are also provided on these uh, fertilizers but there is no specific act as such okay as we have in the nutrient based subsidy schemes okay no specific act is uh, there for urea dap or mop now all these in uh, fertilizers the majority of these fertilizers are imported in india okay and because of this high import we have a very much high burden on our balance sheet and on our foreign reserves and that is why india is planning to shift on the organic farming then we have zero budget natural farming then we also have one more technique that is gm crops okay because if we have the gm crops the yield would increase and we can produce majority of the products in india itself okay and remember these three things are for the farm crops the crops not for the fertilizers but it's just that i mentioned all these products here because once we shift to the organic farming zero budget natural farming and gm crops then the need of the fertilizers would automatically go down okay so the organic farming does not use 
fertilizers zero budget natural farming also lays a stress on creating the organic manure and the gm crops would be made more pest resilient more insect uh, more uh, pest resilient and drought resilient and various other kind of resilience would be inculcated in the gm crops which means the the burden or the dependence on these uh, nutrients would definitely go down so our import would automatically go down okay so carry of fertilizer subsidy and now we are going to have the budget next month so let's see what is going to have what will be the fertilizer burden of india for the year approximately it is going to touch 2 trillions but let's see what will happen because in the upcoming budget the revised estimates of this year and the estimates for the coming year would be given by the government okay so i hope that this uh, scene is clear i know this slide looks a little bit messy but i hope the things are clear in your mind okay concepts should be clear a uh, slide does not matter so now think that it is the fertilizer plant which will be operational by 2024 in odisha and india has a lot uh, a total of five urea plants okay so this is also a urea production plant and i'm going to tell you what is the importance of this first goal coal gasification plant but just i want to finish it with the fertilizer thing okay then i will tell you the importance of goal gasification because this is the first goal gasification fertilizer plant okay so that has its importance as well now this talcha fertilizer limited is a company created by gale india rashtriya chemicals coal india and fertilizer corporation of india so this is also an important fact remember this fact the okay okay india has uh, set a target of eliminating urea by 2025 this is important now whatever urea we consume as fertilizer 30% of it is imported in india so you can clearly see the import dependence and because of this dependence when ukraine ukraine russia war ensued the fertilizers became very expensive and the entire burden was on the government because it could not increase the uh, prices of the fertilizers because farmers are not able to bear that brunt okay now there are top 5 uh, total 5 urea producing plants in india first is that ramagundam gorakhpur sindri barauni uh, and talchan so these are the five okay and they uh, are expected to produce a total of 6.5 million tons of urea every year and this is going to significantly reduce our import dependence now production of nano urea is also going to increase by 5 million tons by 2025 and if you remember ifco at present produces the nano urea and when it launched the nano urea it was the first company to do so in the world okay so that is also another milestone for india and urea accounts for 70% of india's overall fertilizer subsidy so here you can clearly understand the importance of producing urea in india okay so that was about urea now let me tell you about the coal gasification so it is india's first coal gasification based plant now you many a times you must have heard about coal gasification india has also set a target of having 100 million tons of coal by using coal gasification method okay by 2030 and this is a target so do remember this target now what is coal gasification from the name itself coal gasification it is very easy to understand converting coal into gas but how is it how is it done so i am going to tell it in a very brief manner because going into its depth is not going to benefit any of us okay so what happened that underground coal is supplied with oxygen okay and then that coal is converted into a gas which rises up at the atmosphere okay now what is happening we are not mining the coal we are just supplying the oxygen inside the earth okay so that the coal inside the earth would get converted into gas now what is the benefit of converting the coal into gas because if you are thinking that that gas would be a very economic uh, ecological in benefit or it would uh, reduce the carbon emission so that is not happening because coal gasification is if it is not equivalent but it is not even less 
if we compare the pollution created by coal combustion or the coal gasification then why are we doing it the reason is that coal has carbon and hydrogen as its components okay so coal is made up of carbon and hydrogen and hydrogen is what we need today because hydrogen is the fuel of the future many countries are betting high on hydrogen and india is also really relying on hydrogen it is exploring the potential of hydrogen and that is why we have launched the national hydrogen mission as well because we want hydrogen and that is why the coal gasification is done to separate hydrogen from carbon okay now the urea contains four elements carbon hydrogen nitrogen plus oxygen carbon is there in the environment oxygen is there in environment nitrogen to sabse zyada hai environment mein to kami kiski thi kami thi hydrogen ki hydrogen nahi tha hydrogen was not there in the environment it was extracted from water by using the electrolysis process which is again a very expensive process so we wanted hydrogen aur ab hydrogen nikal rahe hain through coal to isse to badhiya baat ho hi nahi sakti koi theek hai so they are basically uh, extracting hydrogen by gasifying the coal and at the same time they also work on capturing the carbon dioxide which comes out of this process so it is carbon capture at the same time as well okay and one more thing that the gas uh, this process in itself is not only useful in creating urea or fertilizers it is also used the gas is also used for many other uh, thing like it it can be used as a fuel in place of natural gas and it was used as a fuel in place of natural gas until the natural gas became more commercialized okay so that is the basic thing because of which we do the coal gasification and because of which the government has set this target i hope that this much is clear and you are not overloaded with the facts i believe so and in case you are overloaded then you have to bear it guys because i am coming once in a week okay so i have a lot in my side to tell you all and i'm going to tell each and everything to every one of you okay so that your knowledge base would increase okay so the next question is the national health authority is introducing a new system under its flagship scheme आयुष्मान भारत प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य योजना टू मेजर एंड ग्रेड हॉस्पिटल परफॉर्मेंस द न्यू इनिशिएटिव विल इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वैल्यू बेस्ड केयर वेयर द पेमेंट विल बी आउटकम बेस्ड एंड प्रोवाइडर्स विल बी रिवॉर्डेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्वालिटी ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट डिलीवर्ड ऑन हाउ मेनी पैरामीटर्स विल दी हॉस्पिटल्स बी जज्ड अंडर द न्यू सिस्टम सो गाइज अ टोटल ऑफ फाइव पैरामीटर्स आर देर and personally when i read this news i was very glad that from now onwards there is a leash on the government hospital employees because a very big reason behind the failure i would not say failure but a a, a negative feedback towards the public healthcare system is the behavior of the staff which is not very pleasing and which is not according to what they have been assigned to so if it is being done then obviously this is going to improve the facility for the general public also now let's move into the details the national health authority introduced this system uh, under the ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana now it is going to judge the hospitals performance but which hospitals performance the hospitals which are empaneled under the scheme okay not every random hospital will be judged under this scheme only the empaneled hospitals will be judged under the scheme now what are the empaneled hospitals or what is the meaning of it the meaning is that those hospitals which are providing the services to the ayushman bharat card holders without asking for cash or money because that is the insurance that is being given to the people now what is the fact related to this ayushman bharat scheme or i should rather reframe my question that how many people are getting the benefit of it So first of all, this scheme was launched in twenty eighteen. Do remember this fact. Now the second fact is that ten crore families are covered with an insurance of rupees five lakh per family. Okay, so a family is getting rupees five lakh of insurance to get themselves treated in the impaneled hospitals. Okay, and uh, this is the entire scheme all about. Okay. so this value based care what does it mean it is basically uh, the payment will be given to the hospital staff and it will be the outcome based payment and it will judge the 
the uh, service that the providers have given to the patients in improving their health okay the performance of the hospitals will be measured on five bases okay five parameters first is beneficiary satisfaction hospital readmission rate extent of out of pocket expenditure confirmed grievance and improvement in patients health related quality of life okay so these are going to be the benefits of the uh, this system but according to me there is one more thing that should be done at the national level and that is the grievance redressal mechanism that should be implemented at the pan india level for the healthcare sector because at the at present we have private sector which is very greedy the hospitals the private clinics they the people sitting there are greedy they want the people to come back and back back again and again so that they can make money out of them so obviously health ki kisi ko nahi padi hai and public sector mein the government employees are not even giving any uh, i would say any uh, concern for the people okay so ultimately our health is being compromised here for the greed of the people and here for because of the negligence of the staff so at uh, according to me grievance redressal mechanism for the healthcare sector is a must at this uh, point like the ombudsman we have for the banking sector the ombudsman we have for the mg narega why can't we have an ombudsman scheme for the healthcare sector for the private and public both there should be that thing okay so that was all the discussion now let's move to the question number 13 because that discussion is not going to yield any benefits it's not like the government is going to listen to us and open uh, an ombudsman scheme for the healthcare sector okay the next question is vinu power installed in india's first 3x power uh, platform wind turbine generator so here where is this system located so it has been installed at karnataka okay so gaddak is the uh, place in karnataka and this wind turbine generator is going to ensure the 24/7 supply of the renewable renewable energy so that we can replace the fossil fuel energy how much money has been allocated by the new sorry allocated for the new india literacy program for 5 years okay so here guys 1000 crore is the right answer so the precise amount is 1037.90 crores and if you are listening to me carefully and you are attentive during the session then you would have guessed this thing that uh, i have not provided you any exact amount in the questions i have just asked you the round figures but that does not mean the examiner would not ask you the exact amount the examiner can ask you the exact amount then what is the solution the solution is not remembering these amounts because you will con get confused you have lot of 200 to 300 schemes are there and for each and every scheme you have different outlays for the sub components of the schemes you have outlays so how many how many would you remember memory ki bhi apni ek limit hai to usme aapko kya karna hai us limit tak aap uh, us limit mein behtar se behtar yaad rakhne ke liye what you can do is you can just try to remember the amounts in round figures because the examiner would never do this thing that uh, in one option he gives this in another option he gives this then is tarike ke options nahi banenge exam mein because examiner also knows that the memory has a limit okay the examiner does not want to uh, take an agni pariksha of your memory or your brain he just want to test your memory so uh, for the most uh, the most viable option here is to re remember such amounts in uh the round figure okay don't try to mug up such confusing amounts okay now let's discuss this program first of all this program was launched in 2022 only so bahut hi recent hai so what is the benefit the benefit or the objective of this new india literacy program is to ensure the adult edu education okay so that we can have more and more adults uh educated and literate in india now one more thing that here the ministry of education has replaced the word adult education with education for all 
okay so that's the basic distinction that the government has made now we won't use the word adult education we will use the word education for all adult education i used so that i can tell you the basic objective of this program the basic objective is to cater to the people who have dropped out of the schools and they are employed okay so now the people who are 15 years or above because the people who are below 15 years are children and they are catered to through the right to education okay now here for the people who are 15 or older would, would be catered to through the new india literacy program now how many uh components would be there in this scheme uh let's discuss that but first know this thing that it is in line with the national education policy of 2020 okay so it will be followed for five years that is another fact so i have just informed you that adult education has been changed to education for all now let's discuss the components first is foundation literacy and numeracy of the people to ensure that they are able to read and write and calculate the basic maths then critical life skills like financial literacy digital literacy legal literacy healthcare awareness child care education family welfare etc all these schemes appear to be very promising on the paper and actually they are very promising suppose an india where every person is aware of his or her digital rights the financial rights the legal rights the healthcare awareness is there so what beautiful country would it be, right so let's see let's hope for the best let's see that this program uh how much this program would be able to achieve that goal next is basic education which includes the uh, preparatory middle and secondary stage education equivalency okay so basically in the basic education component the people who have never been to school they would not be given the education of the mobiles or everything at the very first instance they would be first taught uh, the basic things like what is taught in class 3rd to 5th then 6th to 8th so in this manner their education would be taken forward then vocational skills unko sikhai jayengi continuing education unko prosahit kiya jayega that they would continue their education then formation and involvement of self help groups user groups would also be there so that they also engage in teaching the people and also create awareness so that more and more people get themselves enrolled in this program okay so i hope this much is clear now mode of implementation would be voluntarianism okay the people who would volunteer in the scheme okay they would be the one who would carry this mission forward so uh, government has not appointed the people for this specific scheme uh, whereas in my opinion there should be some people some post or at least the people who are already working in panchayats or block district level or uh, the school at in the schools they should be given this responsibility to take this mission forward now this is right now working on volunteerism uh, who wants to work can come and contribute to this mission next is the learn is to access uh, the content in local languages in online mode through diksha platform of ncert and this is a very important point uh, directly a question can be made on it and it is such a minor point that it may skip uh, your eyes so don't do that diksha platform will be used to give the online content to the people under the new india literacy program okay and that uh, that content would be in vernacular okay government aided schools would act as the places where the uh, education would be given to the people okay so that is all i hope uh, we have covered everything regarding the new india literacy program so let's move to the question number 15 sorry which city hosted the first education group of g20 countries okay so here is the first education group meeting of the g20 held in chennai and that is all nothing much is there now guys throughout the year you are going to see a lot of g20 meetings okay because india is the president of this grouping for this year so we are going to see a lot of meetings of the g20 so what should in, uh, what should you do you need to maintain notes a cheat sheet for yourself write down the g20 meetings only because you are going to take one sheet at least for the g20 meetings because there are going to be so many g20 meetings in this year 
so just mention the g20 meetings and the important steps or declarations if any are made during those meetings their venues their themes okay so you can also create a tabular form of cheat sheet like this so on the one hand the meeting's name the venue the theme and the important decision you can add in this manner okay now g20 is there in news so let me inform you that g20 is not a very old grouping it was created in 1999 only and which countries are the members of g20 so i hope you remember the name of the countries okay so let's just revise which countries are members of the g20 first of all us canada now guys there is a very interesting formula which i follow for remembering the g20 countries i'm going to tell you that but first let's write down the names okay us canada uk france italy germany japan then we have india then we have russia india china indonesia then we have australia south korea turkey saudi arabia south africa then we have mexico then we have brazil argentina and we have eu i guess these are 20 yes these are the entire uh, countries okay so how did i remember these countries so here guys what formula do i follow so it's a little bit of mathematical formula g7 plus 1 g7 are these countries if you remember the g7 so g7 are these countries theek hai g7 plus 1 one is the russia which was kicked out of g7 theek hai then we have the grouping of 3 G3 कह लो उसको कुछ भी कह लो ग्रुपिंग ऑफ थ्री इन विच वी हैव इंडिया वी हैव चाइना वी हैव इंडोनेशिया ओके एंड इफ यू फॉलो द मैप फ्रॉम इंडोनेशिया द क्लोजेस्ट कंट्री इज ऑस्ट्रेलिया फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया इफ यू ट्रेवल इन द पैसेफिक यू हैव दिस साउथ कोरिया ऑल द जपान इज ऑल्सो देर बट वी वॉन्ट काउंटेड बिकॉज जपान हैज बिन काउंटेड हियर इन जी सेवन देन नाउ हियर फ्रॉम हियर ऑनवर्ड्स there is a story which i have created for myself and you need not to remember this entire thing because you can create one for yourself okay i created this for myself because story creation helps me in remembering the things better now you can create it on your own and if you are able to re remember this entire list as it is then also there is no need to create any mnemonic or any kind of story okay so let's know about it so south korea uh एंड टर्की के बीच में है दुश्मनी ठीक है सो लेट साउथ कोरिया गया टर्की के पास अपने इन सब साथियों को लेके देन टर्की गेट हेल्प गोज टू सऊदी अरेबिया विच इज टर्की इज नेबर साउथ अरेबिया एंड साउथ अफ्रीका दीज टू आर दी नेबर्स ऑफ टर्की अब इन लोगों के पास है मटीरियल कम सो दे गो टू अमेरिका अमेरिका में कहाँ पर जाएंगे दे गो टू मैक्सिको इन नॉर्दर्न अमेरिका देन दे गो टू ब्राजील एंड दे वेंट टू अर्जेंटीना okay and this is how they created a group against the turkey okay so this is how you can create a story i created a story out of this uh, and that is how i remember because the 20th member is eu so there is no need to create any story here so that is how but g20 members are important to unko yaad rakhna please kyunki g20 ki presidency india ke paas hai is saal and you can expect a question on g20 any question can come on g20 and also remember this is the 18th summit which india is hosting okay the next question is which has become the first state in india to digitalize its banking services so kerala is the right answer okay kerala is very much active when it comes to its digital initiatives so it has launched the banking services on a digital platform or basically every kind of banking service in the state of kerala is now available on the online mode as well okay now in july 2022 kerala was the first state to have its own internet service okay then kerala fiber optic mission you must have heard about it so it is also uh, trying to provide the fiber optic uh, fiber uh, internet 
across the state so that the digital divide can be reduced then kerala is the only state to declare the right to internet as a basic human right and very important question i would say although every statement here is very important but this one is very much okay then kerala has won three digital india awards in 2022 one is the shira shri portal silver medal okay then platinum medal award was uh, won by the digital workforce management system and gold award was won by the district administration of kottai okay now the 17th question is where is the bhitar kanika national park located so odisha mein this is located and recently odisha conducted a bird population census in bird population census for the uh, birds in this national park that is why it is in news and then avi has recently collaborated with sagar defense engineering private limited uh, for the development of armed autonomous boat boat swarms as part of the sprint initiative sprint initiative was launched in 2022 to promote the development and usage of the indigenous defense technologies what does s stand for in the full form of sprint so here s stands for supporting okay so sprint guys initiative is stand uh, is the full form is supporting pole vaulting in r and d through innovations in innovations for defense excellence so basically it aims to promote the development and usage of indigenous defense technologies now the full form is very difficult to remember right so what you can do is focus supporting pole vaulting pole vaulting r and d innovations okay the, these are the four keywords ab itna to aap yaad rakh hi loge ki sprint initiative defense ministry ka hai ya defense ka hai to obviously defense excellence yaad rakhne ki koi zarurat nahi hai just focus on these four keywords ha defense excellence pata hona chahiye that sprint is the defense initiative okay uh, i am trusting you with that that's why i have skipped this defense excellence okay the task of developing this technology is uh, uh is one of the 75 challenges introduced by the indian navy uh in the azadi ka amrit mahotsav celebration not a very key point ignore next is sagar defense engineering will develop india's first armed autonomous unmanned boat with swarming capabilities so this company has been given this contract to develop this uh boat for the navy where is india planning to deploy a platoon of female peace keepers so borders between sudan and south sudan at the borders between sudan and south sudan a female uh, peace keepers group will be deployed by india okay so the mission for which the peace keepers will go is named as Un united nation interim security force in abai abai is a place on the uh, between the borders of these two nations okay uh this marks the largest single unit of women peacekeepers in un mission since india deployed the first all female contingent in liberia in 2007 okay so this fact is also important let's have a look at the map okay so i hope the map is visible so here guys we have sudan and south sudan so these are the two countries now i am not going to tell you the capitals of these countries the currencies of these countries and the current head of these countries because this is your task aapko bhi to kuch karna padega otherwise how will you be able to achieve your goal if you are not doing anything okay so let's discuss a little bit about this area because this area is very important from its geographical and from its economical uh importance okay so firstly firstly let's start from here so here guys this is the strait of hormuz which separates oman uae with iran okay this is the gulf of persia and this is the gulf of oman and the narrow channel between these two is the strait of hormuz and recently very recently iran and uae conducted a military exercise in the strait of hormuz that is why it was in the news and i picked it up again now <laughs> one more thing guys
majority of the world's oil and the natural gas goes through this strait of hormones and that is why it is very important now let's coming nearer to sudan or africa we can say so here we have geographically so this is the red sea and this is the gulf of yemen and this is the bab al mandeb uh, strait the strait of bab al mandeb or bab al mandeb strait this is called and here we have the suez canal i hope you remember this thing okay so this is called the horn of africa and here we have a lot of uh, turbulence or you can say this is a very much piracy prone area and because of which the indian navy is also deployed here and it also takes active participation in this area or surveillance rather i should say so indian navy and uh, undertakes the surveillance in this area as well many a times okay so i guess uh, we are good to go ha one more thing yemen is a transcontinental country okay yemen is there on the map so i am telling you this thing that yemen yemen is one of the transcontinental countries in the world and we have a very few countries which come in two continents okay so uh, yemen is one of them but i hope you are able to spot the difference okay so let me tell you yemen although it is entirely located on the uh, this middle east which is a part of asia but why am i telling you that yemen is a transcontinental country because there is a socotra island of yemen which is very near to the horn of africa okay thus it becomes a transcontinental country the socotra island belongs to yemen and because it is very close so we say that it also belongs to africa and it belongs to asia so it is a transcontinental country so that was the extra information that i wanted to share with you but do remember the most important facts are related to sudan and south sudan which is your responsibility okay. so guys uh, the last question of the day is with which bank has iisc partner to establish the center for mathematics and computing so it is axis bank again okay so that was all for today's session i hope you have enjoyed the session uh, thank you so much guys for watching it and in case you have any queries you have any feedback you are very much free to provide it on our whatsapp or you can also call us you can also share your queries in the comment section below or on also on the discussion forum So that was all for today guys I hope you have enjoyed bye bye have a good day we are going to meet on the next week okay bye